My dad's in the Air Force. Um, because of that, I've lived all over the world, lived in eight different states, four different foreign countries. Um, I lived in some cool places, some not so cool places. Um, I mean, it's kind of just, I mean, you kind of get used to it after a little while, but it's kind of been weird just moving and having to meet new people, uh, having to kind of meet new friends. Uh, but I feel like you really get used to that and, and you get better at it as time goes on. Um, I know that at first I was really bad at meeting new people, uh, but that's a lesson that I've, I've definitely at least experienced a lot. I don't know if I've learned it yet, but experienced it. Um, so the way I ended up here was really weird, kind of in a roundabout way. Uh, all growing up, I wanted to go to BYU and play at BYU. Um, before, after I graduated high school, I served a two-year mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Honduras. And I got home, and I was all excited to go to BYU, and I was like, perfect, get to play for Bronco Mendenhall. And then I am on the computer one day, and I see Bronco Mendenhall signs Coach of Virginia. And I was heartbroken, to be honest. Uh, it was kind of one of those like surreal feelings, like, oh my goodness, I had worked all this time to go to this school to play for this coach, and now he's gone. Um, but I decided I was going to go there anyway. That had been my goal. Uh, I just kind of wanted to see it through. So I, I went to BYU to do a tryout walk-on because their coaches had left. I, didn't, I wasn't able to get a preferred walk-on status anymore. And uh, so I just practiced and practiced. Literally in the middle of blizzards, I'd be out trying to kick light poles because we didn't have uprights in the field next to my house. Um, and got to the point where we had the, the tryout. Uh, went pretty good. They took me on the team. Um, and, and things were going really great. I worked my way all the way up to being the starting kicker. Uh, then we ended spring football, had the summer, uh, got a lot stronger because of like off-season programs and stuff. And then some things started to not go as good, uh, just like life normally does. What goes up comes down, what goes down comes up. Uh, had a, a week or two of practice where I didn't do as well. Uh, started getting reps taken away uh, and, and then uh, got a call from the coach three days before the season started. He said, hey, clear your locker out. You're out the team. Uh, and that was definitely one of the hardest things that I've had to go through uh, as a football player. Um, just working and, and not having it pay off. I feel like that's kind of the name of the game sometimes that you win some and you lose some. But I really feel like um, God has a plan, and, and I'm grateful that that happened, even though it wasn't very fun, um, because uh, that, that's the only way I would have ended up here. Um, so after that happened, after I got cut, uh, I was just practicing on my own. And uh, one day, I don't know exactly what happened, I was out kicking and kicked my last kick, felt a pop in my leg, ended up tearing my quad. So I had to sit out of football for a whole year. Just quit football, couldn't do anything for a year. Uh, year goes by and I get a call from some random number and he said, hey, uh, I'm coaching kickers at Snow College. And I was thinking, what, what is that? Like, is that a school I should know of? Like, what is that? And he tells me that it's about an hour south of, of Provo in Utah and that they wanted me to, to come play as long as my leg was healthy. Um, and I said, hey, you know what? It's like giving me second life, so let's do it. Uh, so I went there. That's where I met Coach Peterson. Uh, he, always, he always made fun of my haircut a little bit because of my military background and always called me Top Gun Baird because he loved that movie. Uh, so that was, that was a good first moment with him. But um, met him there and ended up following him here. After having a pretty good season there, um, he, he got the coaching job here, and I thought, hey, you know what? It's perfect. It, it must be in the cards, so let's do it. Uh, so I ended up coming to Dixie.
I think getting used to kind of having changing situations um, and just having to be positive even in a situation that might not be 100% desirable. Um, I think that uh, throughout life we're able to see how maybe things we think are bad at first end up becoming really good. Um, and I think that with kicking it's kind of the same way. You kind of just have to kick the ball and once it leaves your foot, whether it goes in or not, you have to move on to the next one. Um, we talk a lot with Dr. Chamberlain about not wanting to have too high of highs or too low of lows because that kind of can, can throw things off and we just want to do the same thing every time. Um, and I feel like kind of going through all that change in life builds consistency and that's exactly what we want on the field. So that's kind of a funny question. Uh, I don't know if I ever really wanted to be the kicker. Uh, growing up, I hated kickers, made fun of them all the time because they were the ones that were flopping on the ground and faking getting hit, getting the penalties and stuff. Um, and I guess God has a sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I could say that pretty, pretty surely now. Um, so I was playing football in high school in New Jersey and things were going all right. And I loved playing slot receiver, little small guy. I actually was fast back then, even though you wouldn't know it now. And um, just started getting concussions. And so I got one and then the coaches would pressure me to get back on the field, like really quick. I'd come back, get another one. I'd come back, get another one. And uh, I got to the point where I had about four or five uh, by the end of my freshman season of football and the uh, neurologist said hey dude you're done you can't play football anymore if you get hit in the head one more time you're gonna be like a vegetable probably and that was definitely a sobering thing to take in but uh, another one of those things where you see the bad situation and there's something good that comes out of it um, my dad was like, hey, what, what, if he, what if he's a kicker? They never get touched anyway, right? And that, that was always my joke with, with that because um, my dad kicked when he was little a little bit. And so I would always make fun of him like, oh, you didn't play football. You were the kicker. And um, then I became the kicker because of those uh, concussions because I didn't need to get hit in the head anymore so I uh, wouldn't become a vegetable. So. Halfway through my sophomore year of high school, it was about the fifth game of the season, uh, they cleared me. They said, hey, you can kick now. Um, I was just going to try and punt. I just wanted to like be on the field. And um, my coach said, hey, we need you to go over there, try and kick the ball between the yellow poles. And I said, OK, I mean, I'll try it. I've never done that before. And I go over by the end of the practice starting varsity, and it was just I guess it was just match made in heaven. It was crazy. Being completely honest, I don't think I had as much fun as I should have. Um, I feel like last year, kind of coming to the new school, the bigger school, about to go Division I, uh, I put way too much pressure on myself just started thinking about things very mechanically instead of just going out and having fun and just kicking. Um, and, and I feel like that kind of made it so it was more of a stressful experience sometimes instead of a fun one. And uh, I think that's something that I've definitely started changing uh, for this year, just trying to, to interact more with the team. Um, I like to consider myself the team's big brother because I'm older than probably every single one of them. And um, I feel like my performance is doing a lot better too, at least in practice so far, uh, hitting the ball a lot more cleanly and, and actually having fun instead of waking up in the morning like, oh my goodness, like, I really hope I do good in practice today. It's like, man, I'm excited to go to practice. I can't wait to see what crazy shenanigans coach pulls out of his pocket today. And so uh, it's just been a lot better just kind of change of mentality. Um, I definitely had heard about it 
Um, to be completely honest, I kind of just pushed it aside because of how stressed out I was making myself with the season. And it was just like, okay, I got to get better. I got to get better. I got to get better. Instead of focusing on, oh my goodness, like that's really cool. Like, that's awesome. And uh, that's definitely something I've been trying to work on this year is just like, uh, enjoy the little things. Even though this sounds like a little bit bigger of a thing, uh, enjoy the little things and, and take it one step at a time instead of trying to take big leaps and bounds. Um, I think, at least for me, um, a lot of the stuff that I do in order to get better is very individual. And so that's kind of made it a little bit easier for me because I don't have to have full live contact practices in order to practice what I need to get better at. Um, so I think that's really helped me be able to kind of stay dialed in and improve. But like you were saying, it really was, I don't know the best word, uh, but it just kind of feels like there's not much to look forward to. And so I, I can see guys getting stressed out. I can see guys getting a little irritable. I myself have had those feelings. Um, and I think the number one thing is just to look at it as kind of a day by day, focus on getting better instead of focus on, oh man, we were supposed to play SUU last week. We were supposed to have our first Division One home game. Instead, I can focus on, hey, I get a sweet locker room next year because I get a year of eligibility back. I get the new, the new training facility. Like, there's, there's positives to come out of this situation for sure. Um, I'm just grateful to be able to have worked my way back to this moment. I think a lot of times um, things don't go well and it's really easy to give up and just stop trying and quit. Um, and I'm just really glad for the people around me that have supported me, uh, our different coaches. Uh, our punter yells at me all the time when I don't like keep my head up after a missed kick or something. And little things like that that have helped me get to this point kind of make it all worth it. Uh, I think a lot of times people say, prove the doubters wrong. Uh, and I've tried to live by proving the believers right. And uh, I know that for my family, this is a really big moment just because they've been with me through all of the ups and downs through the whole journey. And, and it's almost like together we accomplish this goal. It's not just me. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been with me and supported me along the way.